Hello again and welcome to another edition of Empower Health, the program that gives you great power and of course good health. And you know the only way to get that power is through knowledge and that's what we share with you here on the program Empower Health. My name is Alex Asing and today we'll be talking about gut bacteria and how it relates to your overall health. You must make the right choices by dieting, by eating well, and of course by living well. And here's an individual who knows how to live well. It's Dr. Myers with his uh, countless journals on everything health-wise, including uh, gut bacteria. Dr. Myers. How come you're in such a good mood this morning? <laughs> I guess the gut's what, working what, well. What did you do yesterday and last night? Come on, confess. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning how to live well from you, doctor. That's what's going on. Man, you was waxing really eloquent there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah, we're growing as we move along. Yeah. Today we're going we're gonna, to... Um, one of the things that is becoming very apparent, you know, science is a thing that moves along. It, it finds one answer and as it finds that answer it opens up a whole slew of questions and then you, you keep doing that you keep doing that until finally you reach a rock bed and when you reach that rock bed you begin to realize what the answers may or may not be Correct. and at the point where you find that answer you get another hundred questions so in order to keep track of what is going on and in order to begin to understand the complexity of the human body mm -hmm. You, we have this massive amount of scientific inquiry going on and I would say 99.9% .9 of it doesn't get down into the population. I can imagine. So that we, we get left behind and it, it is only by bringing up these things and discussing them in, 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 in public, you know, that, that you bring. I remember years ago when we started this program, we started with things like coconut oil. Yes. Everybody had the idea that coconut oil was bad for you. Mm, imagine that. You know, and, and you'd say, hey, that ain't so. And then you produce all the literature. You have to. Because there are people around who don't want what you call experience-based information. Correct. They want scientific Something information. That's, that's journal and information yes. that, that you can find. Mind you, hard copies, it doesn't take away from the fact that the so-called scientific information mm -hmm. is not as scientific as they think. All right. Because once you get involved in the scientific information and with people who are generating that information, you begin to realize that lots of times there's a whole heap of yeah. fiddle faddle. <laughs> <laughs> I've be, been really nice now. Really nice, yes, right? Yes. I am on my best behavior. Thank you very much. So when, when you find that, you say, all right, um, what is the truth? Right? What is the truth? Yes. And if when you find the truth, and you realize that we're making mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you go back and you trace what you call the, 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 the things that you learned empirically, mm -hmm. and you find that things that you learn empirically over generations are usually more correct than anything else. Uh, I always say that if you look at um, Trinidad 60 years ago mm -hmm. and how we ate, uh, you look at people who had a cow in their backyard and produced their own butter and produced their own um, dahi, right. right? Which is which is the, the probiotics, good. and uh, it's probiotic probiotics relative to our environment because mm -hmm. it would it would be the bacteria in our environment that is beneficial to us. Right. That um, when you look at them and you, you you look, you find that the people who survived to 1890 lived. And not only did they live, 95% of the time they were strong, they were healthy. Yes. And it's just that they reached their age one day and they say, well, time to go. And they went. Yes. And so you would find a 95, 96-year-old great-grandmother running everybody out of the kitchen mm -hmm. because she still controls the yes. kitchen. Yes. You know? And we had extended family groups and we had more camaraderie and more self-support, which we don't have. So all these links have changed. And what has happened is, is that we're getting ill and the potential to get seriously ill mm -hmm. is sitting in front of us and we don't know. Correct. So I <coughs> came upon an article in, in Mercola's website mm -hmm. and he usually comes up with some pretty good stuff. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, and he says that the gut bacteria that we have 
right, that institutions around the world are beginning to rec recognize that the gut bacteria are wielding this very powerful sort of Damocles. Um, they determine whether we're going to have a healthy brain or not, whether or not our brain is going to function well or not, whether our brain is going to become diseased or not. Who knew that we'd be referring back to the gut? It seems as if, you know, we've been talking and I've been talking about the three brains that we have. The three brains? Yes, the brain in your head, the brain by your heart, and the brain in your gut. <laughs> okay. You yes. know, and at first it sounded like a joke. Mm. And then you realize that you do have brain material around your intestines. Yes. And there seem to be a, a kind of symbiosis of the whole system mm -hmm. that we have not recognized. It is very strange. I do a little martial arts. And when you reach a certain level, your teacher starts talking to you about your tantian, yes. the lower system. Not only from a point of breathing, but a point of view is that if you are going to discern danger, it doesn't come in your head. Right. Right. It comes down in your gut. Right. You feel it in your gut. You feel it in your gut. Yes. Yeah. You, you get into a situation and, and, and you, you feel like you want to pass out, you want to crap yourself, you want to pee yourself. Yeah. It's like everything is losing control. Yeah. Yeah. You don't lose control of no, your head. No, no. You lose control of your lower exactly. belly. Exactly. If you have a situation where you feel that something is going to happen, when you look at where you're feeling it, you're not feeling it in your head. Mm -mm. Somebody going to rub you, mm -hmm. your whole belly churns up yeah. and tells you, hey, that can happen. this ain't right. right. You ignore that and you ignore that at your peril. Yes. So you, you, you have to come now and say, this thing is way more important. The body is not a reductionist system. Mm -hmm. One of the disadvantages that we have in Western medicine is that they look for a cause and a solution. But a cause and a solution see, taken in, in isolation mm -hmm. only bring 10 or 12 more causes. Right. Let me right. explain what right. I mean. You have high blood pressure. Now, the reason why you have high blood pressure could be your thyroid is not working properly. You, not have, you don't have enough nitric oxide in your system okay. Okay. So to dilate the arteries. Right. Um, you're eating the wrong oil, which is plugging up the arteries. Well, we all know about that. Right? Uh, and things like that. But you go to the doctor, and the doctor says, well, you have high blood pressure. We have to solve the high blood pressure. Mm. And he surmises that if you have to solve the high blood pressure, there are several ways of doing it. We could get the arteries to dilate, um, or we could slow the heart down. Mm -hmm. mm. So he comes and he slows the heart down, gives you a calcium blocker. Why would you opt for that anyway? Because it's easy. Yeah. It's simple. We could make a pill. Just the way it sounds. And when we make a pill, yeah. we could sell it. Right. Okay. And we could make there plenty of money. Yes. But when you slow the heart down, um, three months later, the guy who is taking it with his blood pressure now reading good, yeah. don't have no sex life. Okay. If it's a woman, she ain't have no energy. The man don't have any, any energy either. Yeah. And you have a whole host of side, of side effects that is happening. So you've taken away the person's quality of life exactly. to such an extent that there are some people say the hell with the pills throw it outside and continue having a blood pressure of 170 180 over 110 mm -hmm. and say if i get a stroke i get a stroke if i die yeah. i die right. and, and you begin to understand that it's not the solution mm -mm. it's not the solution so what we have is we have a whole system that is solution based mm -hmm. and the solution doesn't take the whole thing into consideration right. Right. so we had antibiotics and antibiotics was good and Fleming who found it was a pretty cool dude mm. because they say well um, you know patent it I mean he'd, he'd have been a multi-trillionaire many times over and he says no this is for the good of humanity I don't want anything from it okay has some rare individuals in this world. Yeah, they they so. understand. Yeah. So antibiotics came onto the scene. And it solved a lot of problems. A lot of problems that were taking people in their 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. Disappeared. You know, we started living a little longer. Yeah. And then we started having new diseases mm -hmm. that we didn't see before. Right. So you say, okay. And then somebody realized that, hey, 
have uh, some chickens here, and when I feed the chickens antibiotics to get rid of this little problem that they have, yeah. I notice that they put on more weight. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> What's the price of the antibiotics? Yeah, give them some more antibiotics. Um, not cheap. If I put a little bit in the food, oh, man. I could, and, and here's the reasoning, yeah. I could keep away the disease, mm -hmm. and I could get them fatter, right. and making more money. Precisely. Right? So they put antibiotics in, in, in the chicken feed, and then you tell your partner who rain cows, and the cows start getting a little clip in the air. Yeah. You know, I remember listening to a public radio show in the States one day, they're driving up the highway, and the fella had this place, and he says, so the, the guy who is the interviewer asked me, so, why you just put antibiotics, uh, not antibiotics, why you just put, um, you know, antibiotics and thing, not antibiotics, e um, estrogen, estrogen into the, into the, into the, into the cow mm -hmm. in, and, and antibiotics. And he said, well, it's very simple. He said, if I have a cow, two months before, I buy a, a, a estrogen pill, right. a long, long lasting one. Cost me a dollar, right? Yes. I clip it in the air. Estrogen being the thing in hormone. Yes. Mm. I'm giving everybody it. You see, what that will do over a period of three months, it will put on an extra 50 pounds on the cow. That's a lot of mass. No, yeah. not 50 pounds of high quality meat, right. just 50 pounds. Yes, yes. You see, when I carry it to the market and they put it on the scale, yeah. if I get in 25 cents a pound, you see, work it out. Yeah, right? That is an extra twelve, fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. You see, when I have a herd, a three hundred thousand, right? Yeah. Twelve by three. He said that is an extra three million dollars. Yeah. He said that's good business. He said, and I'll tell you something further. He said, when I want beef to eat, I just go down to the organic farm down by the corner and I just order my beef. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 he didn't see anything morally wrong with it. Oh, it was really? just it was just a point of dollars. Yeah. And that is the problem that we have. Definitely. Now, you have a doctor and that's the way he's been trained. You go with a cold. And he says, Oh, you have a cold. Let me give you some antibiotics. The antibiotics cannot touch the virus of the cold. It's not going to do anything. Mm. But it will kill your gut bacteria. But he says, in case you have Opportunist, infect, opportunist infections. People have been having cold for hundreds, millions of years, yeah. right? Most of them don't have all opportunistic infections, mm -hmm. but it becomes an easy solution. Yeah. And what it does is it mashes up the gut bacteria. Never understanding that if you have a situation where you put antibiotics into a cow or chicken to get it fat, if something must be happening mm -hmm. that um, if you give a person extra antibiotics and it mashes up the whole gut bacteria and five years later they're fat, it, nobody makes a connection to right, that. Right. But when you have a situation where you begin to investigate all the different types of bacteria in the system mm -hmm. and you begin to realize that there are bacteria in your gut that help you to control weight, there are bacteria in your gut that make vitamin Bs, yes. there are bacteria in your guts that make serotonin and dopamine to keep you calm. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that will do the opposite. That's right. And that the body normally holds a balance. Right? Homeostasis. Homeostasis. <laughs> <laughs> I had a slide <laughs> under the table there, boy. Whoa. I picked up a dictionary this morning. <laughs> Whoa. Yes, you're, get, you're getting as good yeah. as my yeah. partner, John, boy. <laughs> right. Right. These, these, so, so you have what they realize now is. A hundred trillion bacteria in your gut. A hundred trillion. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. You have more cells in your gut than in your whole body. So you begin to understand that this living, pulsating set of fellas living there mm -hmm. must have an absolutely awesome effect. In fact, they regard this as their house. Right. So what we're finding out is that if anything attack the house, mm -hmm. it's not only a white blood cells that come out, they just leave the gut and go up where it is and yeah. they say, wait now, send, um, you know, bacteria, <laughs> brucellosis, something, something. <laughs> go, he good at fighting, you know, and he'll go, on, he'll go up there with the white blood cells and he'll issue some thunder. Yeah. So we're beginning to understand that our system is a very complex thing, yes. right? Mm -hmm. and, and so you say, um, 
if you have the, 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 the bacteria, they manufacture vitamins, mm. they man manufacture things that keep your brain healthy, they also protect the integrity of the lining of your gut. Right, very important. Right? Which is that any time that integrity is impeached and food that is undigested gets into the system, mm -hmm. you have a whole range of illnesses which we call allergies, autoimmune system diseases, yes. all kinds of crazy things, but it doesn't tell you what is happening. So he says, um, the latter is important because when your gut lining becomes compromised, you end up with permeability or leakiness of the gut. This increases inflammation in mm -hmm. your system, which is a cornerstone of virtually all brain disorders from Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, yes. autism, the whole range of stuff. Now, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a little story. Yes. I have a partner. And according to him, he has arthritis bad in his 60s. So, you're always moaning, you come, give him a little thing, and it free up, open the circulation, you get a little relief. Mm. But he said, I can't get real relief. He said, this, this thing, you know, long I have this disease. Disease. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> so, I'm watching him, I'm watching him, I'm watching him, I'm watching his diet, you know, sit down, talk with him. A couple of times, he invite me to his place for dinner. Right. You know, and I'm watching what they eat. So, a few weeks ago, about a month ago, we're talking. And he says, boy, he went off abroad. And he came back and he came back and he says, boy, I have endless pain. So I realized right away that he changed his diet mm -hmm. because of the way he went. You know? Of course. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, when the light bulbs switch on your head, mm -hmm. I tell him, I say, I want you to do me a favor relative to that pain. <coughs> he said, what's that? I say, I want you to shut down all your flour intake. <laughs> you see what will happen? I say, if I'm right, your pain should disappear. I want you to shut it down for one week. I ain't asking you for no long period. I just, right. want, just want one week. Try because again. I calculate that if that is the case, within a day or two, when he's cleared all his gut, mm -hmm. and if that is causing the inflammatory response, yes. they'll have a sudden stop. Of course. What happened was, <laughs> was not what I thought at all. It was even better than I thought. Because the third morning, I'm passing by him. And he runs out and he says, watch, watch, watch. <laughs> and he picks up the leg and he, and he pulls it up here. And he says, man, he said, look at that. Yeah. He said, you know what, years I ain't do that, yeah. you know. And I said, wow. well, that's cool. He said, the pain, the pain is gone. Yeah. He said, the pain is gone. So he said, you know, you have me. You have me. I'm doing this thing. So the next week, he's home, sitting down, very relaxed. And this is a true story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Um, his son come in. I treated all you tonight. Burgers for everybody. <laughs> you bring burgers. Oh, these are the flourless burgers? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so he tell him, he said, boy, you know, uh, I ain't eating no flour. Mm -hmm. I don't watch that. Right. He said, but there's only one. What are you on about? Yeah. You know? The devil is a subtle dude, you know. He, 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 yeah. he, don't, he, he don't give you big things to do. Yeah. So the wife says, well, listen up. There's only one burger. You've been doing well for the last week. Mm -hmm. One burger wouldn't make much of a difference. It's just two little slices of bread. Yeah. He says, so they finally convinced him. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, half past right. nine in the night, yeah. he sit down, and I, he said, and I enjoy the burger. Yes, sir. Sure, right? Yeah. Yeah. He goes to bed. He said, at three o'clock in the morning, he mm -hmm. wake up screaming with pain. Yeah, pain. <laughs> it came right back. He had to go painkillers. Yeah. So if I see, just a little bit of bread do that. Mm -hmm. Good. You know. He says, you finally convinced me. You see? You know. That was a test right there. So we, we will get into why the bread does do that. You know, I, I had to tell a man the other day who had diabetes. Mm. I say, you may not understand what you're doing, but you're not stupid. Mm. So I will tell it to you this way. I say, you go to the grocery and you buy margarine, you buy hydrogenated oil. Yes. And all those things are scientifically known to contribute to your diabetes. Mm. They say it all the time. Mm -hmm. Get off of this. Get off of this. Get off of this. And, say, and you go and you buy it. It looks nice on the mm. shelf. Right? It's in a pretty bottle. And the wife likes to cook with it. And the price isn't bad. Right? And so two or three people in the house have diabetes. You're paying the grocery to make you sick. Yeah. 
I said, you call yourself an intelligent person? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the way you, you approach the situation. Yeah. yeah. He said, you know, I never look at it like that. I said, well, how else is it to look like that? I said, you come here every week, you're, not, you're, you're eating too much flour, mm -hmm. you're eating too much carbohydrates, you sugar through the roof, you're taking insulin, mm -hmm. which mashing up your eyes and mashing up your kidneys. Yeah. Because wow. God never make needle to push in exactly. your hand right, to right. do that. It make self-will to do that. Right. Right. He said, it make me feel bad when I come here, you know. I said, no, it's a whole total thing, yeah. you know. And one of the things that you find is that people seem to have lost their direction mm -hmm. and their self-will to motivate themselves to stay healthy. Mm. You know, so when you, when, you, when you go through this, you think, so he says, a researcher in Amsterdam by the name of Dr. Max Newdrop, mm -hmm. okay, decided to do a study on gut bacteria and type 2 diabetes. So he started sampling people's guts, you know, stool coming out, what bacteria they have. Mm -hmm. And he compared people with diabetes against people without diabetes. And he started noticing on his graph that people with type 2 diabetes had essentially a different type of bacteria, set of bacteria, okay. from mm -hmm. people without. So he says, hmm, maybe if I take this bacteria from these healthy people and put it into these people, okay. maybe they might get better. Yes, yes. Right? Maybe there's something in the gut bacteria that allows you to organize the hydrogenated oil, the, all the sticky stuff and all the thing and right. probably help your thyroid to work better and everything. Who knows? That's real intelligence. Right? right? So, what he did was, he says that he took 250 people mm -hmm. and he did fecal transplant. Yeah. What it is? Took a little bit of tooths from yeah. certain people, grew the bacteria from that, right. and then inje put it up the rectum of the others, That's transplanted it. Well, it would, would be highly, <laughs> it would be highly um, <laughs> sterile, okay. you know. Okay. So, how many people do you think got cured of type two diabetes? Everyone. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. So he says, he says. He was able to reverse the type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. in all of the 250 study participants. Imagine. So therefore, there is an easy way. Because if you take that bacteria and you, you, you grew it, and you, you then cultured it, and you gave it to people to drink, mm. right? Okay. Because we drink bacteria all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's strange. So the fact that it... You know, not have to drink bacteria. In fact, it, but yeah. that's what we do all the time. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Everything you drink has bacteria in it. Yeah, but it's called, you know, soft drinks. Really, but but what, did it, what, what was remarkable yeah. is that he didn't get a 10% change. He didn't get a 50% change. Mm -hmm. He got a 100% change. Mm -hmm. It didn't make no big newspaper all over the world. That would destroy mm -hmm. the whole industry. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. You have to understand that. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing that we don't understand. So we keep looking for very, very difficult things. Because um, I know from long time, since I'm in the States, that there are certain types of probiotics that are sold by you know, the very sophisticated probiotic companies. Mm -hmm. I remember coming upon one um, called Primal Defense. Okay. And they would make all kind of claims that it would heal eczemas and allergies and all kind of thing. If you take it over a period of six months, you know, it would disappear. And not at the time knowing too much about gut bacteria and the influence, I had a little idea. I said, this is, this is weird, you know. But when, whenever you gave somebody and they stayed on it, within two or three months, you'd see the remarkable change. Yeah. So you, you begin to understand that we have simple problems that we're making difficult. Yes. And, and the people know. who are making it difficult are the people who are making money out of it. Mm -hmm. The fellas who are selling masses of insulin don't want to know that you could take a couple of gut bacteria and pour it down your throat mm -hmm. and, you know, a few weeks later your, your, gut, your, um, your type 2 diabetes start to disappear. Right. Maybe that's the whole idea that when yeah. you change your diet, when you change your carbohydrate diet, mm -hmm. maybe there's some kind of bacteria or fungus that you starve in your gut, which also helps to kill them out yes. and allow the good bacteria to start coming back. So maybe there, there are side effects from doing a, 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 a diet low in carbohydrates, mm -hmm. right? a ketogenic diet. And we know.
Right. You, you follow me? Yeah, but this would, ha this would have to happen over a period of time. So, yes, always. Mm -hmm. Right. So, they have a... Um, the guy says, he says, look, we, we, we went after um, the genome project. Mm -hmm. That is where, if you, if, if you was around long enough, you know, in the, the 80s, that was the thing. Yeah. We find a way to start measuring the, the DNA. Yeah. Yeah? Yours? Yeah, but maybe. Uh, kind of, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> maybe um, I just look young, you know? Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I just have that youthful mm. appearance. Mm. I mean, not have thrown away as many right. calendars as okay, you know. So we won't ask you any <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't have to get into that. So um, the, 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 the story on the block was we're going to take the human genome, we're going to room, map it out, yes. and when we map it out, we'll have all the answers. Mm. So they found a way to break up the genome and do it fast. Machines that could work at it, so you could put a whole lab full of them and, hey boy, and, and, mm -hmm. you know. and the American research people spent a whole lot of money, and a couple of years later, they said, we have it. We have the whole genome layout. Right? Mm -hmm. And we found part of it was they could figure out, well, if you have this wrong, that could lead you to this disease. Yeah, yeah. Look nice. Mm -hmm. So they say, we have it. But the only thing about it, according to the statistics of, of combinations, they were expected to find, whoom, three or four hundred thousand base pairs. Yeah. We only ended up with a hundred and something thousand. Okay. Which was a little bit more than the animals. So if we thought it was plenty different from the animals, we went for a big surprise. Yeah. And... Um, they began to realize that something was wrong. And then they had a whole set of genes that they couldn't figure out what was wrong. So they say, you know what? We have junk DNA. Hmm. <laughs> junk it, it, DNA. it don't do anything. Right. So God turned from a, from, <laughs> from a creator, right? <laughs> to a junk dealer. <laughs> it's, it's very strange. Yeah. If we had junk DNA. That's the arrogance of, of man sometimes. Right. There's nothing junk. There's nothing. There is nothing in the body that doesn't have a use. A specific purpose. Yeah. Especially when you're looking at a narrow spectrum to try to figure out what the use is. Yeah. Right? He said, um, the Human Gen Genome Project discovered that genetics are only responsible for about 10% of the human disease. Mm -hmm. The rest, the 90%, are induced by environmental factors. Right. Yeah. In other words, our DNA is in a constant ebb and flow of what is coming into mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. We change and we adapt according to the environment. Right. If you change the environment, you don't put any opposition, we slowly slide yeah. downhill. Right. You want a nice common example of that? You have a partner and he's a big puppy in a company and he, he's very important, you know. And he gets into his 60s and he just now I'm going to retire after a good successive thing. You know, you know, you know. <laughs> and he comes to 65 and he retires. Big party and thing and they send him home. And he gets up the first morning and he realizes that he don't have to go to work. He says, alright, yeah. tell your wife is, hey, bring some coffee in bed and thing. Man. I oh. do thing. I switch on the TV. And enjoy himself. Week pass, he enjoying himself. By the end of the first week, he begins he begin to get antsy. Because he says, a man was always on the go. Mm. By the second week, he pace in the floor. Yeah. Right? You want to ring up and ask everybody how they go in. Mm. Yeah. He has no alternative. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have a person like that, give them two or three years and they are mm. thank you. It makes lack, sense. lack of yeah, push. No drive. Yes. You know, nothing so, to look forward to. So at the, at, the point, at the point where he was operating as his peak, he got discarded. And he doesn't understand that that discard, this discard no, had, it, yeah. had nothing to do with him. It had to do with the right. company. That's a rule. Mm -hmm. And he's at his prime. So what he should have been able to do is to step into something that he could do, right. where he could define his own time, his own space, yes. and his own pace. Mm -hmm. He might make a little money out of it. And still be active. And be very active, mm -hmm. but he didn't have the pressure of having to perform. Then right. of a different kind of way. Of course. Of then course. that guy would live. You know, I remember one of my patients coming to me a day and she says, uh, she was talking. She's in her 60s. Mm -hmm. And she says, you know, you and my husband will get along real good. 
You see what I mean? She said, well, you retired. You got early retirement in the six, early 60s or something like that. She says, and when you retired, you was doing something different. And she said, he came home one day and he says, now that I've retired and I have a little money behind me and I don't have to worry, I'm going back to school. Right. So she said, what? He said, well, I always wanted to be an engineer. Yes. Right? Okay. Okay. He says, I'm going and study engineering. She said, and I thought he was crazy until he organized himself and yeah. he started going to school. And he got his bachelor's and he got his master's. She said, please to tell you, right, that n at the end of this year, he's going to get his PhD. Wow. Yeah. You understand? She says, you strike me as just that kind of person. Yeah. I say, yeah, I'm switching off. I, I'm busy getting more and more into the thing. Of I'm course, beginning to course. make connections. That's very important. Right. So the human genome didn't do what they thought it was going mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. In fact, the human genome, as um, a lot of the scientists are now realizing, is an ongoing evolutionary process right. based between an interaction of your consciousness and the consciousness of the universe, mm -hmm. God. Yeah. So, you know, as they say in the, in the Bible, I looked on and he marveled. Mm -hmm. I created that boy and then he leave it for it to do its own thing. Yes. So that it could evolve in a way that allows him to know more of himself. Okay. That sounds, wow. that sounds, that sounds blasphemous, eh? <laughs> but maybe everything in the universe is in a learning process, yeah. including that which created us. It might not be the final thing, it might have something bigger than that. Okay, but okay. That's another thing. <coughs> He says, um, this beautiful dance that happens between our gut bacteria and our own DNA, the gut bacteria actually influence mm -hmm. the expression, who oh, is only 23,000. You know, they expected 100 okay. and something thousand, and they only got 23,000. Right. The, the expression of our 23,000 Jews. The bugs that live in us are changing our genome expression moment by moment. Right. That's what they're finding out now. Mm -hmm. So he says, our genome has not changed over thousands of years, but now suddenly, because we are changing our gut bacteria, yeah. we are changing the signals mm -hmm. that are going to our own DNA, coding now for increasing things like free radicals, oxidative stress, inflammation. This is a powerful player in terms of so many disease processes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we change the whole living style. We've invented stuff, and we've been using it very, very disorganized. Yeah. Being a brain specialist dealing with brain disorders, that's the guy who writes the thing. He says, my whole career, I've been stymied by not having really powerful tools to implement, to bring the changes in the individuals who have these issues. Now we are beginning to get those tools. They are in the gut. Right. Right. Who knew? Now, one of the things that you have to take into consideration <coughs> we have this gut brain. We know it's there. We know how it begins to understand how it functions. Mm. Then, if you look at the gut bacteria in close contact with the whole intestinal thing and, yes. the, and, the, and, and the brain material is, is along the gut, mm -hmm. then you have to say that probably the gut bacteria forms a whole linkage yes with that and that gut bacteria is really part of your survival brain mm -hmm. because this is your survival yes, brain yes you know um, so he says he says in neurological school we didn't study the makeup of gut bacteria and how that would ever influence the brain he says and now this is the leading edge of science mm. we make 95 percent of our serotonin and dopamine in the gut not in the brain Right. Serotonin is the feel-good hormone. Yes. As I said the other day, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you go in the bathroom and you sit down. Yes. It's the serotonin that causes the gut to expel the waste. Right. Right. So by the time you finish, there's an excess of serotonin yes. in lower here. Ah, that's good. Yes. Was yes. Get that really so it has <laughs> some. It has some people. They make a ritual of it. They get up in the morning, mm. they go to the front door, yeah. they pick up their newspaper, yeah. they fold it under their arm, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and they go to the altar. Right. <laughs> yeah. And they sit down. The and they, shanks. Yes, and they take out their, uh, their papers and they read mm -hmm. and they do their thing. And when they finish, they say, yeah. That was good. Yeah, it's every good. single time. Right? Unless that you have good. diarrhea or something. That's, that's another okay. story. <clears throat> uh, so he says, 
you can change the gut bacteria by intervention. Mm -hmm. Taking probiotics and choosing to eat foods that are rich in prebiotics to enhance the growth of bacteria. And even more aggressive therapies such as fecal transplant, which mm -hmm. we just talked about, yeah. where you could introduce. One of the reasons that doing it where you put it back up the, the large intestine is that it bypasses the gut. Okay. So it is easy to start a new colony. I understand. Right, because a lot of times when you put it in the gut, the strong acid and thing will interfere and some will survive and a lot will get killed. Right. That's what the gut, the stomach does mm -hmm. as its role. Mm. Right. He says, um, he says the two key strategies to nourish and protect your mi microbiome mm -hmm. are to limit your consumption of antibiotics on, on a bit to be just when they're absolutely necessary and be judicious in terms of the food you eat. Ideally up for whole raw, organic, non-genetically modified foods, right. along with traditionally fermented and cultured foods. Good examples of fermented vegetables, including sauerkraut, kimchi, kombachu, um, and fiber-rich prebiotics like Mexican yam, mm -hmm. Jerusalem artichoke, garlic, dandelion greens, all these things have food stuff in it that helps to line the gut. Okay. Okay. And when you line the gut and you have good bacteria, you do not have a leaky gut syndrome. Yes. All right. He says, um, these are very relevant lifestyle choices that we can make to enhance health and the diversity of the gut bacteria. Mm -hmm. Now, so we say, just now we said, I said, now tell my partner, stop eating flour. Stop eating flour. Right. And three days later, there was this amazing 98% of the pain disappears. Yeah. So it means that the flour was keeping him in a constant inflammatory state yes. that was resounding in, in the joints, Correct. right? Correct. Because the joints is the place that gets the least nutrients, it's hard for the blood to get in mm -hmm. there. And so you would feel it first in the joints to get the joints stiff. Yes. So you see, let's digress a little minute and say why we have that problem. And you say, your genetically modified foods have opiates in it. Mm -hmm. So when you, you smoke opium, so when you eat it, when you eat it a half an hour later, you say, ah, oh, good. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the opium type gene that they have inside there. So what it does is it begins to make you addictive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Definitely. All right. I can relate to that. Now, the thing that we did with glyphosate and things like that says that your genetically modified foods has a... a, a, a the layer? No, just now. It has a um, mm. thing that that it has a certain fungus that is a microfungus mm. because the glyphosate that they spray the weeds with right. starves the weeds of the uptake of minerals. Okay. They say about forty to sixty percent of the minerals. Mm. A little bacteria, a little fungus in the soil suddenly becomes powerful mm -hmm. because it is easy for it to do that. So it goes into the weed and mm -hmm. it kills the right. weed. Beautiful. But it goes into the plant. The plant it well. can't kill the plant because you've genetically modified yes. the, the plant to resist it. So you're getting a plant with no nutrients. Ah, ah, <laughs> to start. Right. You then have a pesticide inside there. That is to, to keep the plant, bugs from eating the plant. Yeah. And you have a, a gene moderation that prevents the glyphosate from killing it. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Mm. But the same um, fungus that is out there in the soil gets into the wheat, right. gets into the corn. Mm -hmm. So you go and you buy the wheat and you cook it up nice with its opiates to yes. make you feel good. And you eat it. Roti, bake. Dumpling, oh, macaroni right. pie. Burgers. <laughs> Burgers. <laughs> Burger buns, mm -hmm. right? And the pesticide is there. You can't take it out. So it gets into the gut. And what does it do? What does pesticide do yeah. to bacteria by and large? Well, kill it. Yeah, it begins to kill. Yeah. So it begins to kill out gut bacteria. Out gut, uh, gut bacteria. Now, when it kills gut bacteria, the gut normally, you'll, you'll have um, certain... Other, these other things like mm. yeast and things like that which will take over. But now the yeast has to compete with the soil fungus. So the soil fungus starts to mm. take over. Mm. And the soil fungus does all kinds of things. It makes animals sterile. 
makes the sperm count and thing go down dramatically. Okay. And all kinds of crazy things. It also messes with your head. Because anything that interferes with the with the blood with the gut permeability yes. also interferes with your blood brain barrier mm. that protects your brain. Okay. Wow. So it goes right up into So that fungus doesn't only get into mm. to the line in your stomach. Mm -hmm. That fungus is also getting into your brain. So I say we are in for a whole lot of really, really crazy diseases. Mm. And you're beginning to see it already. Neurological Not disorders. Neurological disorders will go on the rise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, gut problems, Crohn's, lupus, fibromyalgia, all that is going to start going on the rise. And maybe some weird versions yeah. of it. Because it turns out that the fungus that you have is not an ordinary fungus. Mm -hmm. It's a microfine fungus. It is about the size of a prion. Now, Prions mm. are the things, small protein-like structures, mm. right, that are almost impossible to kill. In fact, I think in one time I looked and they said that a prion, could, you could put it in an autoclaving equipment and heat it up with steam that will normally sterilize the equipment. It mm. doesn't touch the prion. Mm. So that's why we, when, you, when you had mad cow running prevalent, yes. when they worked on somebody with instruments, they couldn't take those instruments and autoclave them to use them again because it wouldn't kill the prion. No. Wow, yes. I got you. So it's very difficult to get rid of that. So that's what they, the one way of doing it is that they just kill all the cows and dig a big grave and cover it over. At least it gave a temporary respite. So with, by that logical extension, you would say that it looks like we're heading for some serious trouble yeah. with this thing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that it will do is it will certainly shut down a lot of the, of the good things that are happening to us mm -hmm. and cause a lot of disease. Yeah. It says um, the link between the microbiome and, 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 and autoimmune diseases. Inflammation is a hallmark of autoimmune diseases such as Multiple sclerosis, mm -hmm. Lou Gehrig's disease, Crohn's, IBS, inflammatory bowel syndrome, mm -hmm. and a few others. Many of the factors that affect permeability of the blood-brain barrier are similar to those that affect the gut. You see? Right. That is why leaky gut can lead to neurological diseases as easily as it can manifest as some other form of autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have um, autism. Which again, and here he's talking about, <coughs> in, in his book, he says that you have some doctors now that they know that caesarean operations prevent the baby from picking up bacteria. Right. You know, the heavens is good. When the baby is about to be born, the, the mucus that lines the vagina yes. is filled with gut bacteria, right. even more than it normally has. This is important to know. So when the baby is coming down, the, the, the vagina with all the, you know, the, the squeezing actions and yes, thing. Yes. Yeah. He's opening his mouth. And every time it opens his mouth, he gets some of that mucus inside yes. there. So he gets charged One with time. that mucus. Yeah. So this fairly sterile system that has not been working is being primed to work properly. So when you do it by caesarean, you cut it out and you pull it out. Right. He, yeah. doesn't, he doesn't get the benefit of, of, of taking in those. Yes, See, you, buy, you bypass part of yeah. what is a serious operation. Wow. So listen to what some of the more um, humane doctors have been doing. They take a sponge, a surgical sponge, and they put it into the woman's vagina just yeah. before she starts have the, the baby, mm -hmm. and they soak up the sponge yes. with, the, with the gut yes. bacteria. And they take it and they put it in a container that will keep it alive, you know, nice and cool and everything. Right. They cut open the baby, take it out. Well, they mean the, the mother's cut the mother's thing, and they, right. they cut open, they take out the baby. Yeah. And when they take out the baby, and the baby so when the baby starts to open his mouth, yeah. they take the sponge right. and they squeeze the juice yeah. into the baby's mouth <laughs> juice. in order to keep yeah. it. Well, it's, it's juice, it's right. a, yeah, it's, okay. it's a liquid, yeah. right? And that seems to work just as good as when the baby is coming down the, the, the tube. But of course, I suppose it will take us about. 20 years before yeah. we begin to do something like that. Right. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, he says, um, he says, uh, in Brain Maker, that's the name of the book that we'll talk about mm -hmm. that year that he's writing, I present very uh, petty, pretty aggressive treatment for maintaining and restoring gut health using a variety of techniques, from using probiotic enemas mm -hmm. to even going as far as having people, people get fecal transplants. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen the success. He says, a young man with MS who couldn't walk without two canes who, and underwent a series of fecal transplantations in Europe yeah. came back and walks without any assistant, whatever. Mm -hmm. His videotape is linked to this, the book, okay. The Brain Maker, right. that we're talking about, that, 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 that we're taking the subject of this out of. Mm -hmm. He says, I use the video of this man walking when I do lectures to physicians. They look at this with their jaws hanging because, again, for you and me, this was never even a consideration in medical school. Mm -hmm. Nobody didn't know. Not that they didn't know because you have... Um, Companies like Garden of Life, yeah. um, whose founder was a guy called Mechnikov, who went off to find out why guys in the in Middle Eastern Europe mm -hmm. lived to 150 and 160 okay. years old, okay. and found okay. that the only thing that they did different was to eat plenty of fermented foods. Yes. So he says, gut bacteria, and out of his work came this company called the Garden of Life, and they've been around for more than about 100 years. So obviously. There are companies who know the effect because they make primal defense, right. which is things uh, they say this will cure your skin problems, mm -hmm. this will do this, this will do that, make a whole difference. You take it, and sure enough, it does it. So, things that will seem in problem, you pour in antibiotics and steroids and all kind of things. All you have to do is to fix the gut bacteria. Yeah. Let yeah. the good guys get in there and they come and say, All right, what's, the, what's that eczema doing there? Let's go fix it up. Mm -hmm. And they go fix it up. Yes. It's a very simplistic way of looking at it, but that is the sound. Right? Mm -hmm. So he says, um, vaginal birth. He says, do everything you can to avoid cesarean section. That's right. what he's right. mother. Right. When you elect to deliver a child via cesarean section, and there are times when it needs to be done to save the life of the mother of the baby, some people will say, I want to do it because I don't want no pain. Right. Not understanding that everything that the universe designed, mm -hmm. it designed for a reason. I rather suspect that we are going to come to the conclusion one day that the, 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 the contractions that the weather has, which contracts in a certain rhythm mm -hmm. following the inverse square law, the golden mean, imparts some kind of thing to the baby that we don't understand yet. Because that is in the higher realm. That yes. is in the electromagnetic realm. And they have very few people flying that high okay. in medicine these right. days. Right. So, so we're not going to be privy to that so, so it's not only the, 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 the gut bacteria in the mouth. Mm -hmm. It probably has something to do with that whole pain response. The, 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 yes. the things that are generated by the mother. When you take and you do, do so bam and you hit her spinal shot to shut down the, the whole contractions and thing, yeah. and you cut out the baby, yeah. maybe you're robbing the baby of a whole lot of experiences right, right. that are very necessary. To prepare it for life? Yes, uh, to, to, make it, to make it withstand life mm. in a particular way. Mm. Because life only exists and progresses with opposition. Right. Maybe yeah. you're taking away some of the opposition there. Okay. You know, it's a kind of philosophical no, no, I, speculation. I, I, I you know, uh, it's like, uh, I once read that in Israel, mm -hmm. they do not allow in vitro um, fertilization. Right. That's right. where they take the sperm and the egg out, yeah, yeah. and they do a little thing under the microscope, <laughs> and they say, all right, we're ready, we're going. Mm. And they open the leg and they shove it back in the womb, right. and then they wait to see it happen. They said that they found that the babies that were coming out like that had a kind of amorality. Um, that other babies didn't have. Yeah. They, they didn't seem to have a concept of judging right mm. and wrong. Mm. Mm. In other words, that whole thing with climbing up and going, mm, yeah. mm, oh God, <laughs> <and> nice, <laughs> and that whole thing setting up the electromagnetic yes. field yes. obviously does something to the baby, something to the yes. intelligence, yes. something. So according to the mindset of the man and the woman, right who is doing this that's, thing, that's very important it part of sets it. a pattern for how intelligent and how 
conscious that baby is going to be. Wow. Right? So we deal the same thing. So this is where he talks about the sponge, and the sponge is placed over the baby face, inoculating the child with his mother bacteria. Mm -hmm. He said this could be a good adjunct any time a cesarean is inquired. Unfortunately, at present, it's unlikely you'll be able to get your doctor to do it. So even though they have all the science for it, and they know that it works, and there are people that do it, there are some doctors who will say, that's a whole heap of nonsense. Yeah. Because yeah. their whole perspective of information is severely yes. limited. Yes, yes, yes. And they refuse to unlimit it. Right. You know, break it down. Yeah. Let it open. Let more ideas come in. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you say, aside from providing mm -hmm. the most appropriate nutrients, breastfeeding, also affects the child's microbiome via bacterial transfer from skin contact. Yes. So, woman has baby. Baby crying. We're going to get milk. The milk will also have bacteria of from course, the mother. But that ain't all. We could take it a step further. Mm -hmm. When she pick up the baby, the baby heartbeat might be 123 beats a minute, 125 beats a minute, yeah. plenty faster than it is. Because it, 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 it getting going, you know? Yeah. So it's revving up. It's yeah. like you and you buy your full sports car, <laughs> right? It's plenty speeding ticket. <laughs> because you're, you're revving up, right? Yeah. So the baby's yeah. the same thing. But when the woman takes the baby, and does so and puts it to her breast mm -hmm. and the baby starts to suckle. If you're monitoring the heartbeat, the heartbeat does mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And within a minute or two, it slows down to the exact beat of the mother. Yes. Mm. That's amazing stuff. Right? Yeah. So there's some kind of electromagnetic symbiosis going on mm -hmm. that is very necessary for the baby. Right. Yeah, but he says, I feel my baby. I want my breast to get saggy. Okay. I want hard breasts when I get old. <laughs> <laughs> As if it really has any you relevance. Know? By the time you get old, you're so tired. You know, you know, <laughs> so you're walking around with boosy back, and you can't walk because your joints hurt you, but your breasts could be standing. <laughs> <laughs> Human beings are really ridiculous, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you begin to understand that you have all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. So he says antibiotics. He says when you change your microbiome, certain groups of bacteria tend to be favored, such as the Firmicutes group. When present in excess, Firmicutes increases your risk of obesity. Animal research shows that when you change the animal microbiome using antibiotics, they gain weight. We also give antibiotics to cattle mm. to make them fatter faster. So we're talking about your, yeah. Yes, the same thing occurs in your body. That is why avoiding unnecessary antibiotics is so important. Yeah. So part of the obesity problem we have is the overuse of antibiotics mm -hmm. for diseases that it doesn't have anything to do with. Right. And also in all the chicken and beef and everything that we're eating. So now we have rampant obesity and we're also eating plenty of grain. Genetically modified grain. Yeah. So you begin to understand it's like we're running down a road to hell. Mm. You know, disinfected products like antibacterial soap, hand gels also fall in this category and should be avoided as much as possible. Yes. I remember going into some hospital and they had a, a thing, an uh, antibacterial gel. Mm -hmm. uh, and the lady said to me, if you're going to go up to the ward, you have to put that on your, hell, on your hand. I said, like hell? Yeah. No. <laughs> I can imagine Doc saying that too. She says, why? It will kill the bacteria. I say, yes, and do you know that this thing is permeable? Yes. And that is poison? It will be absorbed into And why skin. am I doing that? Yeah. Nothing wrong with me. The putting that on my hand is not going to stop cross-infection. Yeah. <laughs> she says, Mr. Go ahead. <laughs> I says, I, that is an absolutely stupid practice. I would just pay money just to see that. So, so you, you begin to see all over that this happens. Then you have sugar, high fructose corn syrup, mm -hmm. which pr high fructose corn syrup preferenti preferentially increases the growth of pathogenic disease causing bacteria and fungi and yeast. yeast yeah. mm -hmm. See, good, we come back to our good friend again. Mm -hmm. So limiting the amount of refined and processed sugar in your diet 
is a key dietary principle for gut health. As I said, in the 1800s, the average amount of sugar American uses is a pound and a half a year. Mm. Now, uh, the average American is a pound and a half in a day. Mm -hmm. You know? So, you begin to understand that we have problems. So, our cameraman is making all mm -hmm. kind of signs to me. <laughs> so, it looks like we'll have to continue this next week. Mm -hmm. Very good. Because mm -hmm. we want to finish talk about this. And we don't really want to finish talking about this, and we want to go through some of the gut bacteria, mm -hmm. so the various types, mm. and look at the properties and look at what they do. Because nobody tells us anything about that. That's right. It have gut bacteria, they'll tell you, drops your blood pressure. It put, when it eats food and it toots, mm -hmm. the stuff that is coming out of there is good for you. <laughs> and it helps to drop your blood pressure. Probably it helps to produce nitric oxide in the system yes. and all kinds of things. So we're going to do that uh -huh. and, and, and get, get a whole handle on that. Absolutely. So let's, let's call it Amazing. a thing here. And wow. Well, well, we need to wrap this edition of Empower Health. But I'm telling you, lots more information to be learned uh, about you know, gut bacteria, good gut bacteria, bad gut bacteria, and making the right choices when it comes to diet. When it comes to lifestyle, it will improve your overall health. So that's where we're going to be learning more in another edition of In Power Health with the illustrious Dr. Myers and Alex Assing. Do join us again for another edition of In Power Health.